Right, there we go. It's eight o'clock and time for the BATC net. It's a bit chaotic for me here this evening. I left everything a bit too late, but uh, good, to, uh, good to see such a large number of people uh, volunteering for the net, uh, and especially Ed, PY2RN, who's going who's gonna to come up first. Um, Ed's at work, <laughs> and, uh, so I don't know how long, whether he'll be able to stay for the, for the whole second round, but you're obviously very welcome, Ed. Uh, anyone else wanted to join the net, just let me know on the, the wideband chat, and I'll add you to the list. Um, just a quick note that um, the next activity day is November the 30th, and uh, that rolls into December the 6th and 7th, uh, which, and it's all bands activity, so uh, uh, there should be a few more details about that on the forum somewhere. Uh, so on the list tonight, we've got PY2RN, Ed from uh, Sao Paulo, uh, Gareth, G4XAT, followed by Martin, G8KOE. Uh, EA7KIR. The rest of the list is, is up on the chat. And uh, we've also got G7 Echo Whiskey Sierra joining us. He, he's on after you, uh, Richard. And welcome back, by the way, Richard. And uh, just before James, G0 DQH. And I don't think I've seen you on the net before, uh, but uh, Paul is, a, is fairly local to me. So uh, you never know. I might even be able to get through to him uh, terrestrially. Uh, right, well, without further ado, let's put it round to Ed in uh, Brazil. Hopefully the weather's a bit nicer there than it is here, Ed. It's uh, absolutely perishing here. It's about four degrees centigrade today, so uh, not the warmest day. So round to you, and then say after you, it's uh, G4 X-Ray Alpha Tango. Papa Yankee 2, Radio November to take it, with the BATC Thursday evening net. G4 Fox Kilo Kilo, standing by. Thank you, Martin. G4FKK uh, returning, Papa Yankee 2, Radio November. Hi, everybody. Uh, nice to to be here on the BATC net. I think it's my first time. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, um, that the reason uh, it's 5 o'clock here, uh, 5.02, but... Um, uh, not so early uh, for for me here in Brazil, but actually uh, I'm I'm I work with uh, uh, mostly U.S. Uh, United States uh, hours, so they have I believe in, right uh, it's it's three o'clock there, East Coast, so uh, on a Thursday. So, but uh, things are quite quiet uh, today. So I just decided to. Um, to, to join uh, BATC net and uh, glad to be here. Um, greetings everyone. Um, what I have here is uh, uh, preparing uh, some uh, fun to, to this uh, weekend. Actually I got uh, two kits of the Pico um, Pico tuner to assemble. I have all the the garbage bag. No. <laughs> The component bags here. <laughs> uh, I have uh, I have one for me, another one for a friend of mine. Uh, so uh, hopefully you're gonna get busy this uh, weekend here. Uh, weather is uh, is good, 28 degrees Celsius. Uh, actually, it's gonna change. I mean, uh, cold front is coming, uh, so I can see the clouds uh, coming. Uh, I think it's gonna rain. Uh, tonight, but uh, so far it's good. All right, guys. Uh, I'm not sure if gonna be on the second round, but uh, very nice, a pleasure to be here. Um, I will listen uh, closely uh, while I answer some emails here. <laughs> Seventy-three twelve. Thank you very much. So going to go for uh, oops, Tango Alpha Tax. Is that Tax? Then go for go for Tango Alpha X-ray. It seems I'm sorry if I I got wrong. I don't have the list in front of me. This is Papa Yankee 2, Remio, November.
Okay, <clears throat> thanks Ed, G4XAT, no worries on the call sign, it um, doesn't take long for me to get things wrong, <clears throat> trust you're all fit and well anyway. Um, had an interesting, fairly busy week, but as Martin says, it's um, we've had two, the first frosts of the year, in fact the last two nights we've had a fairly deep frost, um, deep for us in South London anyway as in um, probably minus two or three degrees, I suppose. <clears throat> Enough to freeze everything and drop the remaining leaves off the trees. Anyway, <clears throat> while I remember, and I'm pleased to see Keith GU6 uh, EFB on the list, because I'm sure it was you, Keith, who mentioned some software that lets you reuse old tablets, as in uh, Android or uh, Apple Macs. Uh, the reason being, I've, I've been gifted an old Android tablet uh, works fine, hasn't done a lot of hours, <clears throat> but it no longer runs BBC iPlayer and stuff like that. So it's on an older version of Android. Um, that's a Lenovo, and uh, the wife's got a Samsung that's probably, I don't know, maybe eight years old. And that now has stopped doing iPlayer control. So um, there's some space I could fit another monitor there, probably. They're only like 10-inch tablets, so... If there's um, still some software that works with that, I'd be interested to hear about that. Okay, and uh, no problems reported on the chat by the looks of things, so that's good, I'll carry on. Um, thinking about TalkBack, <clears throat> particularly for um, the ATV contest in June, um, I had three beams on one side of the camper and uh, a two-metre beam on the other side of the camper set up horizontally. That worked okay, except they interacted as in physically clobbered each other when beaming in certain directions. So uh, I gave some thought to solving that. Um, don't need that amount of gain. It was a 12 element ZL special that I made out of fishing rod pieces, in fact. Very compact and lightweight. Works really well. And uh, sits at 6 metres above ground on, on fishing pole sections and uh, I built a little rotator for it as well that'll do 360 in in 30 seconds so it's actually really quite a handy bit of kit if you're chasing down signals anyway um, going back in time I just big up the pictures not that picture there this picture here okay <clears throat> this is um, one that I built about 20 years ago for summits on the air same concept, it's a 7 metre fishing pole. The top two sections I use to make a, a 6 element Yagi and the rest of the pole gives you 5 metres above ground and the whole lot packs inside the tubes and obviously doesn't weigh much. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. Why can't I move on? I can move on. Let's go back to that one. Move on, right. Okay, so here's a little video of the 3D printed mechanism that's string operated. So you pull on the string, which overpowers the elastic band, gives you a horizontal beam, and let go of it and gives you a vertical beam. Um, that's another video of it, that's another video of it. Uh, and that is um, a mechanical solution to um, fitting an automatic gearbox into a different engine. It's uh, a metal adapter ring, which is specially shaped to space the converter, the required amount. Took a lot of digging around the archives to uh, find something that would solve that, but that will do the trick. So, um, that's uh, the beam solution. Um, and uh, quick to deploy and lightweight and um, gain-wise, I've run it through Managal to simulate it and check its match and that sort of thing. Um, it reports a ridiculous gain figure in, in Managal, but um, pointing it at our local beacon, GB3VHF, um, I got S6 uh, pointing straight at it, and pretty much S6 off the back of it as well, so front to back's not too bad. <laughs> Joking. <coughs> off the side of it, it's down to S2. Uh, this is done with a Langstone, so accurate as an indicator 
and um, yeah, it's about 50 or 60 degrees beam width, I suppose, on the minus 3 dB point. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. I think it'll do the trick. Finally, and I, I can easily make this just one over, unless there's anything you need to come back to. There's a an ancient old microphone I picked up off eBay, and that's the insert in it. Now I suspect it's it's XPMR. It's a Revco brand, and I suspect that the insert, which measures about 320 ohms, is one of those old telephone earpiece type things. So it's almost certainly comms grade quality. But I was thinking of uh, swapping it out for a, a decent electorate. <clears throat> and then benefiting from the PTT if I wanted to use um, TalkBack. And uh, also inside it, those of you skilled in audio might be able to tell me what that is. It's decayed plastic. <clears throat> and that was behind the rather smart metal grill. So I guess it's, it's something to do something to the sound. So, assembled masses, pray answer some of my questions, as you very often can do. And uh, round to, um, to you, Martin, G8KOE, from G4XAT in the BATC Thursday Evening Net. Over. But, uh, come on, I think we have. And good to see you there, Ed. Um, missed you from the uh, World Wide Net, but um, cracking picture from you. Um, and that um, telephone uh, uh, insert, um, that brought lots of memories back for me. Um, when I first started into the uh, um, doing audio and such like, uh, fairly large amplifiers and such like, I came from the TV trade. And I was always used to having a screen to look at. And I, I couldn't, um, uh, I need an easy way, particularly when you're in places like the Palace Pier in Brighton, to find which amp had actually packed up. And I must have had one of those inserts. And um, you can clip them on each amp output. Um, and if it makes uh, a, a sort of quite a, um, a clicking sort of noise, you know there's DC there. And you can easily find out which amp has actually failed. Plus, um, you can use it as a microphone as well. Um, I got through a number of those. I used to get them from GWM Radio in uh, Worthing. Um, but, um, yeah, the green ones in particular I used to use uh, for high impedance. Um, right, what have I been up to? Um, installing the node, a replacement node, which, um, thanks to uh, the BATC, I'll show a... Uh, picture of it I uh, won't say everything's gone smoothly but um, nothing ever does um, let's go to the center screen it's now the talkback nodes running on uh, oops, the Raspberry Pi 5 um, sits in a nice little box there and uh, it's got the UPS uh, backup on it which um, was talking to John JTT this afternoon, and I've also got a UPS on uh, my main operating system here, and had an intermittent power cut of just a few seconds whilst I was mid-air chatting to him. And um, apart from there's a slight difference in tone, I think, um, everything coped quite well. Um, configuring the node seemed to go very easy this morning, except... Um, I forgot to connect, uh, sort out AIXRPT connection side of things, which I use to monitor various things. And then Echolink I hadn't set up, um, which uh, the problem I had there is I couldn't remember the password. Um, so I ended up having to reconnect the old node to actually read off the password. Now, I, can, I think Brian was having some problems connecting to me, which I think he's connected, but I've developed a slight sort of problem at the moment, um, which, um, let's go to the uh, main screen, centre screen. I've got the bubble map, which looks really good, and I can sort of see, um, but I've lost my list of stations um, on the dashboard. Something needs rebooting, I think. Um, was working fine. 
but um, all these things are, are sent to, uh, to to try us, I think. <laughs> um, as for um, the All Star Talkback, um, going to the Worldwide Net, um, I had a. Uh, I think I am. You yeah, certainly are there, Brian. You're there. Um, you're there. I just can't list the stations on the uh, dashboard at the moment for some reason. I suspect something just wants rebooting. But, uh, yeah, you, you're working there, Brian. Thanks for popping up. Um, yeah, I was working through the, the uh, Worldwide Net and uh, had a brief power cut, which um, the UPS I got feeding the all three or well, four monitors and the PC stayed in quite happily. But I lost connection to the um, uh, Pluto, which sits in the garage. Um, so I thought, ah, oh, things have got corrupted there. Um, anyway, sort of cutting the story a little bit shorter. I feed through the mains to the garage, through uh, those nasty little things that everybody hates, but it works fine for me. And in the garage, I've got um, a couple of the um, plug top switchable, which I switch from uh, a little fob arrangement, one of these. And when they lose power, they switch off. So I hadn't sort of thought to mind that uh, I now no longer had power to the uh, Pluto, which is why it wasn't there. Um, also, I didn't have... Um, I have a eight way, uh, a switching sort of arrangement. Um, I can actually show it if we go to the small screen, he says. I have this control network. It's, it's got the volts... And such like so that would all have defaulted back to nothing so that needed switching back up again and also the power supply which is in the top there the 20 volt odd volts that's on a separate switchable plug so uh, let's get my mouse back we'd have uh, lost power to that um and i was thinking in my mind i'll have to put that on a small ups out there but then i suddenly woke up to the fact that i communicate uh, network wise through the mains and it's totally pointless anyway but uh, whilst John was on it all chunked out and all I had to do is to hit the power to, re to uh, switch on the um, Pluto and we had connection back to it and so it, it wasn't a long job um, but uh, at the weekend I was panicking thinking uh, but I used the talk back the um, TATV talk back to uh, say to in fact Martin can you take over? <laughs> Which he did do. So uh, that worked a treat. Anyway, um, thanks to Dave as well, if he's there. He um, acted on some things very quickly for me and most appreciated. Um, I think I'll keep it short as it's a, a big net. Um, but uh, the, uh, the Pi 5 hustles along and um, um, looks very good actually. It runs very quiet. So um, I think it's round to uh, EA7KAR. So uh, get ready there. Um, and I'll put a test card and throw it over to you. Oh, i better get back to um, DATV Red. I'll say I won't better switch anything off. So uh, 7 is all for now. I'll get my mouse in the wrong place. And uh, a test card and uh, I'll disappear from G8 Carey. Okay, we seem to be live. Um, okay, thank you, Martin. Um, yeah, I've been busy building uh, <laughs> what everybody else is doing, <clears throat> building a uh, an all-star node. I've done a radio-less one, uh, and I use the same mic that I'm using now. It's a phantom-powered mic, and it goes into a pre-amplifier. So I've taken a high-level output out of the preamp and stuck that into the... Uh, I'll show it to you. I'll show it, because I'm pretty proud of this construction. You won't be, but I am. Um, hang on. Okay, that's the front panel. Two speakers. No, it's not stereo. It's just that I had two two-inch speakers, and they... 
on the desktop, you know, on, before I put it in a box. They sounded absolutely terrible. But, and this is predictable, you put them in a cabinet and they sound superb uh, with an extended bass response because you've got double the amount of air being moved around. So you actually get another octave, really, don't you, in theory, anyhow. That's the back panel. Mains powered. Oh, yes. And a preset in the top right-hand corner for the audio input going in. Inside, it's a real rat's nest. It started off really neat, actually, but like everything else. <laughs> uh, that's the mod I did to the third uh, sound card. The first two uh, were a write-off. The... <laughs> Um, I've even bought a little microscope actually it's fantastic actually it was about 20 euros and it plugs into the computer and you get the screen on that you know and it's really good but I can't use it for soldering I can't coordinate myself uh, so uh, yeah, you know the problem is I haven't got a steady hand I pulled the tracks off uh, and then I shifted and a capacitor that I didn't want to shift so I, that's the third one I've actually got a fourth one now uh, which is <laughs> a spare, if you like. But it works. It works. It's uh, araldited in, actually. I've araldited the cables into uh, in between the two uh, jack sockets to keep them secure. Uh, and that, that seems to be the solution. Uh, so I'm quite chuffed with that. And then uh, a view from the other side. Uh, <laughs> more rat's nest. There's a lot of wires involved, isn't there? I mean, for something so simple, it's unbelievable. And that's the power supply and things, yeah. Tiny little power supply, 3 amp power supply. But uh, fits in the box nicely. And now this. I was hell-bent on... You can do a screen grab of this if you want. Because this is how I've managed to connect it up so that I get a red light coming on when I press my talk key, press the talk key. Uh, so I'm going to call that mic on because uh, in the diagrams they call it COS for some obscure reason. And and the green light I'm calling uh, telemetry, which is actually what it is. Uh, and then the heartbeat light I've got there. So you'll notice in the middle at the bot near the bottom, there's a, there's a diode, a BAT46 in my case. And that's because I thought the chip on this card was 5 volts, and it isn't. It's 3.2 volts, it turns out. So, And I'd taken the 5 volt supply from that capacitor with the red wire. And <clears throat> what was happening was when you weren't pressing the torque key, the 5 volts was going through the resistor and back into the GPI O uh, pin, on, on the sound chip and uh, I knew this was happening because the lead was glowing not full brightness but it was glowing um, and after a lot of head scratching and talking with other people and everything uh, I came up with this solution and it was easy for me to do because all I had to do was cut cut the yellow wire uh, and uh, take a couple of inches out of it and put a diode in and a sleeve around it and that that, uh, so if, if you've got a screen grab of that, you can copy that by all means. I think Martin's got a, a copy of it as well. Uh, actually, I'll send... I think Martin's got an old copy. This is updated slightly. Uh, and I've written in the top right-hand corner... Uh, this is more for me than anybody else, but it might be useful. Remove R6 if you don't want phantom power going to the microphone input, the audio input, and remove R5... Uh, because that's a very good place to pick up the blue wire. In some of the videos you watch, they tell you to solder it to one of the chip pins, and it's extremely difficult to get to. It's much easier to take it from here. It's the same thing. So it works very nicely. Uh, back to me. Um, and I can show you it uh, working. Yes, I can. Yes, there it is. And just to prove a point and uh, cause absolute chaos, 
this EA7KIR testing testing you see the red light came on and there's the data coming back wonderful no one's going to answer oh here we go oh, yes. that all worked thank you Michael <laughs> that was Brian coming back so it works you see fantastic so that's that's uh, I think that's it from me uh, this time around um, so uh, where are we going next we're going to Peter GW7BZY over to you Peter from EA7KIR in Malaga yeah sorry about that beginning of course I was on the wrong frequency wasn't I got the PA going got the preamp going and uh, I was yeah. on on the so, wrong f on the wrong frequency uh, anyway very nice that mic I did a snapshot of it um, I may well have a go at that um, <coughs> but uh, I don't know I found my old radio unfortunately it's not of the standard 258 I don't know I can't the writing's too small on it for for me to see and I appreciate how the soldering difficulties are I'm not very good with soldering um, I tend to burn the track off or the solder and pokes into the wrong place and either dumps a load of solder on it or or I you know desolder something else so um, your surface mount is difficult and even with two pairs of glasses on and the floodlight on it I can just about see it so um, yeah not easy anyway um, good to see everybody uh, well I've so far that I have seen what have I seen um, I saw Martin K.O. yeah it, um, Anyway, if the power goes off, my, oh yeah, if it's a inter small power, the the internet will go down anyway, won't it? If it's a generalised um, power interruption, and um, it'll be a while before the um, the uh, router boots up again. Well, mine takes a little while to be connect, so um, that wouldn't help with the um, connection to the um, internet at large. Um, nothing new here, really. Um, I haven't. I've been playing my saxophone actually. I've been practicing for Christmas. Um, that's about it, really. Um, is it bow ties this Christmas, um, Martin? Um, Martin K King of it, not King of England, K um, King King. Um, is it, are we on bow ties this this um, Christmas? Because I I don't know if I've got a, a dinner jacket that fits me. Somehow they keep shrinking. Put stuff in the wardrobe, they come out half the size. Have you know? Has anyone else noticed that? Just that as a general question. Um, so there we are. I think I don't think I will come on again. I'll take a second turn. Um, I'm just showing my face. Um, and um, I think I'll hand it round. Or am I handing it round too? I've got it here. Um, G8KQ, K, um, GKQ from GW7BZY. We'll, we'll go with that. GW7BZY, GHEKQ. Good, that's working. Uh, good evening all. Um, just a couple of things to say tonight. I'm only going to come on uh, for, the, for the one over. But uh, good to see such a large net and a few, uh, uh, at least one uh, new uh, member on the net. Um, Activity here, um, mainly uh, construction on my uh, spectrum analyzer po project, um, half hardware construction and half uh, software. Um, made some real progress this week, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and I've uh, just uh, packed up all the stuff I'm uh, taking to the uh, microwave round table that's up, at, uh, up in Shropshire this weekend. Hope to see many of you there. The ATC shop will be there, um, and there'll be an antenna range, Portstown Clinic, all the usual uh, uh, fun of the fair. Um, it's uh, been been branded as a microwavers retreat. It's quite a in the past. It's quite a uh, different sort of microwave retreat, microwave weekend. Anyway, spectrum analyzer. Um, I've put finished the front panel and put the Raspberry Pi 5 in 
um, hooked up the uh, scan and started working on the software which takes the IF out of the spectrum analyzer at 323 megs and turns it effectively into AM for display on the, on the screen. Um, I'm having some issues with that because it doesn't come out of the SDR as a continuous stream. Uh, it comes out as in 4K chunks and hence it's not uh, time continuous. But anyway, we're getting there on the solutions and I'll show you what it looks like before I hand it round. Stand by, a bit of shaky cam to go on. So uh, that's the uh, the finished panel. It, the thing that isn't finished on it is the labelling. It's got temporary labels on it at the moment. Um, main input is there. Uh, mix, external mixer input is underneath there. Hopefully it will end up with a tracking generator one day which will come out there. Um, the 24 gigs tracking generator which you also hope to put in will come out on the SMA there. Um, usual spectrum analyzer controls, you know, that's tuning, that's time per division, span width, um, input attenuator, those are the, uh, the important ones. Um, this screen will look fairly familiar to uh, any Portstown users. Um, it's a modified version of Portstown 5. I'm learning a lot about uh, what I'm going to do with Portstown 5. Uh, but it's a modified version of Portstown 5. And down the uh, left hand side here is the SD card socket couple of USB sockets and an HDMI socket. Uh, now last week I mentioned um, uh, your SD card extenders and I'd never had any troubles with them until uh, this week. Uh, I bought one of the, let's just put this camera back, I bought one of the new Raspberry Pi SD cards which seemed to be pretty fast um, it's uh, very similar performance to the SanDisk, but I did find it doesn't like the um, SD card extenders, uh, whereas the SanDisks are totally fine with them. But uh, I think we, the ATC wise, we might actually switch to the uh, Raspberry Pi SD cards because for their performance they are cheaper. Okay, that's it from me. Uh, won't be on again, but uh, round to uh, J uh, to Richard. Uh, GI4DOH and the net. G GK2 with the BATC net, uh, GI4DOH. Uh, Thanks, Dave. I think you cut yourself off slightly, uh, slightly early there, so uh, your carrier dropped, so I, I jumped in. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Good evening, uh, all. Uh, good evening, Don. Uh, EIFBJ. Uh, you'll see you, you're on the side there, Robert. Uh, GI6IBJ. Uh, good evening to you. Just down the road, and Patty and Kevin, if you're you're there. Very uh, good evening. Hope you're uh, you're well. So yeah, back from my uh, from my travels. I actually got back uh, on the evening of Tuesday of last week. Uh, unfortunately, I did pick up a very nasty tummy bug, and I'm still suffering with pretty severe diarrhoea and the the rest of it. I have a couple of days of vomiting as well. Trouble with these nasty countries like Burkina Faso, but uh, I. I'm on my third day of antibiotics and slight improvement, but obviously need a bit of time. I didn't really feel like coming on last Thursday night, so uh, a good time was uh, was had by by all out there. Uh, uh, I'll not uh, <laughs> not dwell on on details other than to say the the police kindly came along and confiscated all our radio equipment for a couple of days in the, the middle of that, so that set us back a little bit, but. Uh, it was all part of the excitement. We didn't know whether we were going to be detained, deported, or whatever. But uh, when they brought the equipment back, you know, with everything set up again in no time at all, we're back on the air. A great experience. Uh, my first time with that uh, that sort of thing. And uh, of course, uh, I need all these things. What am I trying to do? 
the uh, Q100 station, uh, which I brought out with me, uh, I think to me, Q100 is uh, a repeater in the sky, and it's great for, for this net. I don't have a lot of interest in, in having ordinary narrowband QSOs. Uh, I threw up what I, I was asked if I would do that, and uh, I had a total of 1,212 QSOs uh, between CW sideband and FT8. Uh, as you can imagine, FT8 was the biggest number in sideband mix with quite a lot of uh, CW stations. And I think it did about 20 hours operating, probably overall in that time, according to the, uh, the login program. Uh, what am I doing here? How do I get myself? I'm going to try that one. So uh, there were uh, over 700 unique calls uh, amongst that lot. Uh, there was one on Italian station. I don't know why it appeared in the, the log on FT8 37 times, and uh, I, I wasn't I wasn't a weak signal. Uh, that the the decision to change to uh, last minute to 60 centimeter uh, or slightly over this 55 centimeters wide, so fit it in the the biggest suitcase that I buy on on Amazon. I uh, did the job at plenty of power. There was no issue with doing multi streams. Uh, just a, it's not the not the busiest Q100. It's not the busiest thing uh, for FT8, even when you're a DX station. So seldom had more than three streams going. Uh, though it did run up to four at, uh, at times. I actually worked 62 different countries through Q100 on uh, the narrowband mode. So. That was uh, that was interesting, uh, and I was happy. The station the station was fine. Make the big question mark because uh, I was going to be much more underneath the satellite, or at least looking up at 55 degrees as opposed to up 22 odd degrees from from here. Was it going to be stronger? And the answer is it was really only a couple of dB stronger. And uh, yeah, it was it was nice to, to have that. But uh, I was running the maximum power that I, I could to, uh, to get that. Uh, I did take it my own FT8 stations were coming back about 8 dB, uh, plus 8 dB. So uh, that was a couple of dB more than I was getting here. So uh, moving to the bigger dish at more or less the last minute wasn't a bad idea. And if I ever do anything like that again, that would be the, uh, the size that I would take with me. So great experience on that. HF, of course, uh, I've never experienced sort of wall-to-wall -wall stations calling, uh, and the particular rig, uh, as opposed to my Aircraft K3, with very very steep uh, skirts on the uh, the filters, uh, 250 hertz, 400 hertz roofing filters, it uh, it pole filters, uh, they're very steep skirts, whereas the, the TS590 SG, uh, you, you could try narrowing the filter, but you still get strong stations uh, coming up way off that, so it was easier just to sit at 2 kilohertz, 2.5 kilohertz, and just let the Mark 1 brain do things. So it was a totally different operator by the time I, uh, I came away from there. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so the start of every every three hour shift is quite foreboding, you know, getting getting into it, uh, you know, sort of feelings of inadequacy and the rest. But by the end of every shift, you know, I'd, there was a smile on my face, you know, through knowing that it was better than when I started. So uh, I'm not in any hurry. <laughs> I went to have got my health and my stamina back again uh, before I uh, put my name down for another one. But, uh, you know, I didn't. I don't think it'll be that long before I'm, I'm signed up for uh, another day expedition summer. The uh, amazing thing was we, we had to fly from Burkina Faso to Addis Ababa and then on to Milan on the return journey, but with three or four hours to kill at Addis Ababa. And uh, there was another day expedition, the, uh, the Victor 55 Lima Alpha uh, day expedition, which had been in, in Namibia were uh, waiting for their onward flight for that. So they, the two the expedition teams together and they'd some of the, the, the hardened uh, the expeditioners knew each other. So that was great meeting up with them. So that was sort of icing on the, the cake from the, the journey back. 
So that was that was all good fun. So my life just uh, and <laughs> I should get better. Uh, it was certainly uh, a great experience uh, to uh, to be doing all that. So I can get back into radio again. Uh, I think the probably the last time I was on uh, before I went, I announced that the GB3 DO repeater, the power supply, had uh, had died on it, uh, and I got a new. Uh, 10 amp adjustable power supply uh, to go in its in its place. Uh, unfortunately, the the amplifier is totally dead to the world, uh, but there is a fuse inside. The, I, I need to open that up and all the rest. Haven't really been enthused about that sort of thing, so uh, that's uh, a priority for me to do that. So enough uh, for me. So oh, uh, Ed, yeah, good to uh, see you on for the the first time. Very nice picture from you. Uh, I think it's round the Paul G7 EWS now, I have to take it. Uh, I'll just get the test, test card up and uh, see you on all, all of them in a while. Uh, this is GI4DOH with the ATC net. Listen for audio. Just listen for audio. Sounds alright. Alright, good evening everyone. Hope everyone's well. Um, yeah, good to see you back from your trip. I've um, been watching the uh, the net or the, the playbacks most weeks, so I've been listening to uh, your plans for that. It sounds good. It sounds like quite an adventure. and. Uh, Glad you got home almost well. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, yeah, the spectrum analyzer, uh, Dave. That looks brilliant. And the uh, the All Star node, Michael. Very nice. That's the next project I'm going to be getting onto. Um, and Mike, um, Chief uh, Chief or FKK. Uh, Dave, you saw John's message, but I no longer live near you. I moved last year, so I'm down in the middle of Kent now. Um, so yeah, and also Gareth, I was quite close to you. I was at Eden Park in Beckenham, so I nearly picked your brains when I was uh, starting to build all this. But uh, I moved before that happened. So um, yeah, I haven't got much to say. Nothing technical like uh, the rest of you guys at the moment. Um, this is only the second time I've been on, and. Um, haven't really been doing much. We've been building a snooker room in the back garden to house a full-size table. So I've been working on that um, all my spare time, which is now complete. So we'll get back into radio a bit now. Um, all I have done is since starting off um, is I've been messing about with the preamps on the uh, Adam Plu Adam Pluto. Uh, started off with one that had no gain at all. Then I moved on to these little ones which uh, I should think everyone's familiar with those um, which the first one had no gain at all really negligible gain I ended up having to have three of them daisy chained together to actually get any any usable signal um, I then bought this one which uh, is, is nice it was only a, I think it was less than 10 pounds it's got this built in little power supply so you can put anything up to 30 volts into it works perfectly but it gets red hot and I put a little heat sink on the chip um, makes no difference so even in standby you can't touch it it gets that hot um, otherwise it works fine and it, it didn't pop um, in the end I found one that's um, exactly the same size and similar PCB to one of these but it's got two chips on it so like a two stage amplifier that works excellent and doesn't produce any heat at all so that is what I've uh, been using and um, all I've been doing is testing with it and it seems fine no problems at all um, so other than that no nothing new going on here so I won't keep it as it's quite a, uh, a big net tonight and it's the time's getting on so I'll pass it over to James G0DQH from G7EWS uh, good evening all and speak to you later
Yes, good evening everyone. Just check the audio. Yes, good evening everyone. Just check the audio. It's working fine. Good. Yes, good evening and good evening everyone from San Diego. I've been there a couple of times. Super place. Um, Gareth. Just go over to my... Over to me. Gareth. Um, I just thought you'd like to see this microphone. It, it predates even me, and, and I'm nearly 80. <laughs> so there you go. Um, I actually bought this one, and another one arrived in the post um, and never been opened. So they're, they're well, World War II, um, and uh, it's a carbon microphone, of course. So that's all they had, I think, in these days. Anyway. Um, I just thought uh, I'd just show a, a bit of the station to uh, to pass away the time. Really, here we go. The um, the dish came my way for twenty five pounds. I bought that locally from uh, um, a lady whose uh, husband had passed away. Um, and it works really well. The PA is in the garage, um, so I operate everything remotely from the um, from the shack, which is the study or, if you like, the third bedroom. So uh, that's that. Uh, this is a close up of the dish. Um, and uh, note the plastic um, food containers, which is basically the plastic covers that cover the uh, both the TX and the LMB. And there's a um, another close up of that of the LMB, and the cover just clips off uh, to get access to that, and otherwise it it remains watertight and the PA uh, sits in the garage and the cable comes out to the dish um, that uses a single FET in the final and you can see the, the large fan is over the main uh, PA and to the right of that is the driver PA um, I think I'm running around about 50 watts at the moment. I actually did turn it up a little bit tonight and uh, it, uh, it, it it just works um, and um, I'll show you how I operate that in a sec. This is the um, this is the uh, remote for it so I can actually turn the power on with this one and the PA, sorry, the bias on with that. Um, and it all works pretty, pretty much okay. So I'll pop my uh, course on up again and uh, I'll say good evening and pass it on. And it's uh, uh, GU6EFB to take it. Um, from G0DQH and up comes my call sign and uh, I'm just about to drop carrier. So pushing the button and I'll see you all next week from G0DQH and I'm halfway between Winchester and Southampton and Romsey so in Valley Park in Chandler's Ford. So dropping carrier see you all next week and good evening to Yeah, we do. Uh, very good uh, evening to everyone. Thank you there, uh, James, G0 uh, DQH. Sounds like you've got, uh, uh, um, well, you've got a lovely station there, uh, uh, James. Um, well, today, what's been happening? It's been a bit of a uh, disastrous day on a number of fronts. Um, we've had um, sleet, snow, but it hasn't stuck. High winds, 80 mile an hour winds. And at lunchtime, I got a uh, 
transfer to a picture. At lunchtime, I got a phone call from my uh, daughter, who was um, rather distressed. And um, let's. Uh, she was at work. She's a nurse in the ICU department, a senior nurse. And uh, she got uh, a call. That's not her car. There's her car. Um, it's uh, got rather squashed by a, uh, a very large uh, tree, unfortunately. So uh, that is a write-off. It's uh, basically um, just whose skip are we going to uh, put it in. So, um, yeah, she's uh, obviously uh, very upset about her, uh, her little car there. So, um, yeah, I've been running around uh, to insurance companies and everything because she was at work. So, um, yeah, I had to try and sort things out. Um, on another front, I've been playing around. Um, Michael, um, EA7KIR, has um, kind of uh, been talking about everybody's audio, and I knew my audio was absolutely um, appalling, and it probably still is. Um, so... Um, Let's just show you this. Um, yeah, let's just transfer over onto that. Hope it comes out okay. I found this piece of software, which people may know about and may be using. It's just it's something I found. Um, it's this Ulean loudness, loudness Meter 2 software. I'm using the free version. There is also a uh, paid-for version. But it's also got a plug-in for OBS, which is how I'm using it. And um, you can set up all sorts of things. Half of it I'll um, admit to uh, having no clue about what it all means. So uh, over to you on that one there, Michael. You can uh, probably explain a bit more. But um, reading a BBC paper last night, it seems around 24 to 23 LUFS is um, what they use for TV. Um, so um, that all works quite nicely and then I oops let's find the right one if I go to the microphone I found there's all these various um, other things that become available there's an audio limiter so it doesn't matter how much you scream into the microphone you're not going to um, overdrive the output and also um, a three-band equalizer and there's also some other stuff which I haven't uh, yet played with um, so um, that might be a bit uh, interesting for uh, others to play with um, if they uh, weren't aware of it. Um, it may be doing nothing at all, but my audio, um, I was doing some testing last night, seems a little bit um, better. Um, okay, Michael, okay, <laughs> my audio is still low. Okay, anyway, um, I'm still learning with that. So uh, maybe on the next over, Michael, you can maybe uh, point me in the right direction. OK, that's enough from wet, windy and very cold Guernsey. It was wind chill and minus 17 today. Absolutely freezing down here. Anyway, round to uh, Colin. G4. GU6EFB, G4KLB, can he get to the... G6EFB, No, he can't. Get to the volume can control the quick enough. No, he can't. There we are. <laughs> that's better. <laughs> right, OK. That's that's only the only disadvantage of having one mouse that covers three computers. <laughs> you can't get it there quick enough. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Anyway, not to worry about that. Um, right, okay, what have we been doing? Was I on? No, I wasn't on late last week, so I missed last week. So I've been playing with um, the All Star. I've got um, All Star on the repeater now as a, an additional input, and we've been um, fiddling around um, w with that side of things, and that's all done now. I have to do a little bit of uh, um, extra work to um, make sure that uh, that. Uh, when the when the carousel is playing that it mutes the, that audio because that's just doing background sounds um 
and uh, that's all done so that's excellent thanks to John over there in America who's <laughs> who did all the software for this um, came up with a rather nifty way of uh, in integrating that so that's very good so we've got the uh, all-star node there's two nodes I've got two nodes running at the minute one is on the repeater which is the G4 KLB one there is one for SQ but I haven't got it uh, organized fully <laughs> Um, I'm waiting for um, sort of some microphone bits really actually um, the actual receive side is is absolutely fine but uh, I've got the other one here which I've got this um, this little Dell Wise 340 which I have shown before on here and this is um, that's the node for um, for that one which is um, um, which will probably become the SQ one. Uh, the interface is the swapped over in a minute. That's one for a Raspberry Pi. It's a small one, whereas the one up here is um, I can't quite see it actually, but that's actually the larger one. So, <laughs> so you've got a small box, small Raspberry Pi there, and the small box. They, that goes together, and this one is the, is the right size to go with the with the bigger one. However, what I will say is, anyone contemplating this. The Raspberry Pi is the way to go. <laughs> I have got this work. I was determined to get this to work. It's a bit more of a faff. That's all. That's all I will say. You have to do more Linuxy things, whereas the Raspberry Pi is more straightforward. The instructions are um, more prevalent and um, better, and the interface is somewhat simpler. Um, so I would. Um, rather than go for one of these which is the other option or uh, you can find you can use any, any anything like this really to do it of course but uh, but uh, these these are 20 quid so you know it's cheaper than a raspberry pi <laughs> but um but i would say the raspberry pi is the way to go um i've run it on a raspberry pi 3 this one happens to be a raspberry pi 5 um because it was on the desk at the time <laughs> really that's the only reason um, but it does work extremely well so but i don't think a, um that um a three or four would be any different really but um but there we are but that but that's um that is working fine but that five will become a ports down five in due course <laughs> so uh yeah so that's that running this one on this microphone I've got some issues with this I'm working through at the minute. Um, that microphone. And then the other one, talking to microphones, <laughs> I've invoked this um, <laughs> this 1970s microphone. And you can tell <laughs> you can tell by the Dymo tape its um its age. But um I've got that one on this um on this uh <laughs> on this node here. I'm gonna run out of battery so I'll have to be quick with this bit. But um I've done an um this is the third one I've done. I got some some rather nice wire from Roger. Um I use Ed. Thank you very much for that, Roger. Um and I've done it this way. And you may say, why have you taken the sockets off? Well I've taken the sockets off um to utilise the pads for other purposes. Um so that I can you can see there's a resistor for the LED in, in there. And uh, this little wire is slid because it's insulated slid under the chip and it goes to the to the ones um um one one on there and one on there but it but it goes underneath to take this so there's, there's no strain on it you see and this has worked extremely well so that's um that's my way of doing it on the ones that on the oh hello <laughs> on the what on the ones that are um in there I have indeed used a bit of aerodite <laughs> just as a belt and braces arrangement just on just uh, you know strategically placed sort of a little blob here and a blob here <laughs> just to um, to hold it down although it, it may not necessarily need it but it made me feel happier <laughs> so so, um, so that's um, that's that There's nothing under there to see and um, so that's how I've done those right okay let's let's get rid of shaky cam for a minute i'll probably only have the one go because there's quite a lot on tonight um <laughs> no phone socket no that one's got a phone socket <laughs> they both have actually i must confess they both do have a phone socket <laughs> oh dear oh dear oh dear 
Um, let's, have, let's have a look. You could have a phone socket on there. Um, yeah, so um, well, I, I, you, can, you can see this one briefly if you, if you must. Um, let me just... <laughs> I've lost my <me> mouse now. <laughs> oh dear, come on, come on. Get, yeah, so yeah, so there is um, there is a phono socket on the back. <laughs> so you got. I'm using 3.5 jack for the. Uh, there's, there's a little speaker there. The uh, something I found in the loft, <laughs> and um, just using it as a speaker. So uh, the other one's got a deluxe. The other one's got a deluxe speaker. Look, a nice, a real fancy vertex one. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there we are. <laughs> so, anyway, I digress. I digress. <laughs> the other thing I've been playing with is um I've I've also um <laughs> I've also got this new toy which is this um this printer here and you can see it takes um four rolls of film and automatically changes the color. Um I, we we got the a version of this at work. We a three D printer arrived at work, and I was so impressed with it, <laughs> I went and bought one. <laughs> so, but we this one is a sort of deluxe, and we haven't got this this um this unit on the top here, and uh, as I say it is the lower slightly lower model. But uh, yeah, very impressed really with that, um, and so I've been busily doing things. Did it this for those that know 3D printing? <laughs> did this benchy in 16 minutes? Absolutely insanely fast. 16 minutes for that. But um, I won't go. I won't bother to tell you all about all the rest of it, really. But uh, this one is a PETG, and this filament is notoriously difficult. Um, for its its stringing is terrible on it. Um, always has been on all our other printers. But this. Um, it's pretty good. Um, can, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult filament, this one. But um, and that's why we chose to do that little test. And um, and I always print one of these. <laughs> oh, t all right, too late. We, we've lost the. <laughs> we've run out of battery. <laughs> Self-limiting timer on that. Anyway, that's um, that's that. <laughs> that's that. Um, one thing I didn't check is who it's. Who is actually going to now? Actually, <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Oh, it's back. It's back to um, back to Martin. Okay, then I'll say something. Else. I won't come back again because I'm on ridiculously early shift tomorrow. Um, so I'll I'll say seven threes to you all. It was great to see Ed on at the beginning. He probably can't watch all this length of time, but uh, um, yeah, great to see him. Um, we had some great fun. He did some real good stuff for us. It was great. It's great to have a cue it's over there. So um, you're always welcome any time, obviously, on here, as is anybody else, strictly speaking. <laughs> okay then. Right then, I'll pass it back round to um, G4FKK to take it. G4KLB. <laughs> if I, if, that would have been slick if I'd have got the got the mouse in the right place. <laughs> Okay, Colin. G4 KLB. G4 FKK returning. And uh, okay, uh, Paul, <clears throat> I'll knock you off the uh, second round list. Uh, da, 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 da. Although uh, you're very welcome to just come on and waffle. So I've I've left Ed on the uh, on the front of the list. So um, if you're still there, uh, Ed. You're on next. I'll just put the second round list up again. Minus Colin. Anyway, uh, very interesting uh, net so far. And um, it was nice to see you on, uh, Paul. Uh, I think we have worked before on DATV. And I've got, a, I've got a memory that John had told me a while ago that you'd moved out of the area. Um, so apologies for forgetting that. <laughs> But uh, I think I may have worked you as well when you were in Beckenham. Uh, not not on the telly, but uh, on other bands and things. Uh, so, Ed, yeah, good to see you on. And um, good luck with the two uh, Pico tuners. They seem to work terribly well. 
And, um, yeah, they're not quite dead, uh, Mike, the flowers. They're feeling a bit poorly. <laughs> but uh, Anne's been out all day today. She went, um, we had one of her friends staying with us over the weekend, and um, her friend was going to visit some other friends in London today. So uh, she said, oh, Anne, you ought to come with us. So she did. And then they went to see a show, and she's still not back, so uh, uh, hopefully she's all right not uh, not getting too involved in the after-show drinking. She doesn't usually. Anyway, yeah, so hopefully the Pico tunes will go well, uh, Ed. The, um, the frost, Gareth, was uh, shocking here. I, I didn't realise it was going to be quite as frosty. So I think my uh, my exotic banana tree plants out in the uh, garden have, uh, have had it. They look very unhappy this morning. And uh, I liked your uh, horizontal stroke vertical <clears throat> elastic band technique there. I think that bit of uh, perished plastic is probably just sort of a, a windshield for that microphone, uh, Gareth, but I don't know for sure. Um... I like the look of your new node, uh, Martin, and uh, I'm glad the uh, the bursary all went uh, went through well. So that's uh, that's jolly good. And uh, I'll I'll be changing my uh, port addressing uh, later on this evening. Uh, Michael, your uh, your all star node was very impressive. Um, your your wiring diagram doesn't show it as stereo, but you've got two speakers in it. So I don't know if that's a uh, just to get a surround sound of mono, or uh, or what you're doing with two, but uh, it sounded very good. Brian came across it very well. Um, Peter, if you're still watching, uh, well, what you need is one of these. I wonder if I can. Yeah, I use this for uh, watchmaking this microscope, but um, it's jolly good for surface mount soldering as well. I've discovered, although I do, it's difficult trying to keep the. Um, the uh, solder fumes from bunging up the lens. Um, <laughs> Norwegian blues, uh, that's right, uh, Mike. <laughs> uh, yeah, 70 sems. We worked on 70 sems, did we, Paul? Uh, for the benefit of those in San Diego, by the way, who may be watching, uh, we've got a uh, 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 an internet chat. So uh, every now and again I glance up and see what uh, what's being chatted about on the... Uh, on the website there. Um, new to theater, yeah, I don't know why I'd have been talking about you to John then, uh, Paul. But uh, there we go. John will probably remember. He's got a much better memory than me. Uh, anyway, uh, yes, so uh, there you go. And, uh, well, I don't know if you're giving, a, giving us a blast of saxophone on... Uh, on the Christmas net, which I haven't worked out what day that's going to be, actually. But yeah, I think uh, I think bow ties will be in order. Some sort of dinner jacketry. So Thursday the 26th. Oh, that's Boxing Day, isn't it? So what's the, the 19th? The 19th will be the pre-Christmas net, uh, um, Peter. So uh, we'll look forward to seeing you and hearing you in all your glory. Of course, you'll have to write. You'll have to play stuff that you've written. We can't have copyright infringements on the BATC net, uh, Peter H. I. Um, I made another note here. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> clothes shrinking. I did genuinely say to my wife once. This was uh, I just about turned about forty-five, I think, and uh, I said, "Have you changed the washing powder? All these trousers have shrunk." And I couldn't understand why she thought that was funny. But there you go. Um, Dave, if you're still watching, the Spectrum Analyzer's coming along nicely. And uh, interesting on the SD cards, not uh, not like in the extenders. Uh, glad back, I'm glad you got back from your trips to Burkina Faso uh, safely, Richard. Uh, sorry you brought a, a bug back with you, but hopefully that'll uh, work its way out, as it were. And... Um, I can't, I can't believe you got raided by the police. But at least you got the gear back. Uh, some countries, they may have raided you and then sold it all. But uh, And 1,200 narrowband contacts, that's uh, very good. 
and it must have been uh, you must have had some tales to exchange with the other de expedition there. Uh, Paul, if you are still watching, uh, your audio was a bit low, um, but not quite as low as yours, Keith. Actually, today your 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 audio seems lower than before, but I'll come to that in a sec. And um, I'm very impressed with you building a snooker room, uh, Paul. Uh, yeah, the hot preamp is. Um, how did I fix that? Because my, my preamp gets a bit warm. I think I just ignored it, actually, uh, Paul. Uh, nice to see that um, that old carbon mic, uh, James. And, yeah, it looks like I, I had... Um, when I was in hospital for three months <clears throat> once when I was 16. And um, I was in traction. I'd, uh, I'd got knocked off my uh, souped-up moped by an 83-year-old. And I was knocked into hospital for three months. <clears throat> totally immobile, and um, our garden backed onto another garden, and the person that lived on top of that garden was uh, Jan Cliffen, uh, G5 Alpha, Charlie Alpha at the time, a uh, Dutch fella, <clears throat> and he brought an 1155 receiver in <laughs> to the hospital, and uh, he wired it up, so it was right next to my bed, and uh, I'd got all this traction, great great load of ironmongery, so we used that as the aerial. And um, it worked very well. In those days, they didn't have noisy power supplies and things all over the shop. Anyway, when I got back from hospital, he let me keep it, and I, uh, I obtained a, a, a T1154. And I'm sure that had a microphone. It certainly looked very similar to the carbon one you were showing there, James. Um, Keith, very sorry to see the uh, effects of the storm on uh, on your daughter's car there. That's very scary, isn't it? At least she wasn't in it. Well, I assume she wasn't in it. And uh, hope, hopefully she's okay. And, um, yeah, the audio was, was very quiet, but very compressed, or, or maybe over-limited. Because when, when you leaned in towards the mic, you didn't get any louder. Just got a bit, uh, a bit more compressed. So um, I think... I don't know where you're measuring the loudness units, but um, not. I don't think you're measuring them where they're going into the uh, transmission chain. I think this is why Michael has uh, a meter on his sending end and one on receive as well. So uh, he knows it's all right leaving him and coming back again. Anyway, it, uh, it looks very impressive there, Keith, and I'm sure you'll get the levels right uh, shortly. Uh, Colin? <clears throat> Sorry to see you've got to uh, go to work at early doors. I've made a note of your uh, all-star numbers. And uh, that that's a bamboo printer you've got there, 3D printer, isn't it? So uh, that's, uh, that's going to be amazing. I know Roger, G3IUZ, is uh, very impressed with his uh, bamboo. And uh, by the way, very good evening to Roger and also David, who's watching, G6GZH, Brian, 6HFS, Don, EI8DJ, John, JTT, of course, and Tim, MW0RUD, is watching. I've a few call signs I've uh, noted. Oh, and Mario, of course, in San Diego, who's uh, relaying this net to uh, probably a, a lot of bemused uh, people in San Diego. Right, well, I'll stop droning on and I'll put it round for the second round. If you are there, uh, Ed, it's uh, round to you next. Uh, after you, it's Gareth, G4XAT again. Um, assuming you, you want to come back on, Gareth. Yeah, I think you ought to. Oh, and Ashley's on as well, GE8DPH. Good uh, evening to you, Ashley. Uh, I had a 19 set as well. I thought I'd had about five of those over the years. Uh, right, um, so... Let's put it down. See if Ed doesn't pop up, per uh, Gareth. Give him a few seconds, and uh, if he doesn't turn up, then uh, you, you'll go ahead. Uh, Papa Yankee 2, Radio November, in the second round of the BATC Thursday evening at G4FKK, standing by. Yes, I'm still here. Thank you, Martin. G4FKK, Papa Yankee 2, Radio November, coming back. Uh, for those uh, who never seen, uh, this is uh, 
this is uh, my my antennas. It's a it's a view from a seven degrees elevation. Uh, that's the elevation I, I get from here uh, to the satellite. Um, the mesh dish is a transmission with uh, 2.3 meters wide, and the solid dish um, just after the tower is a 1.5 meter uh, reception. And the, the small one in the middle is a 1.2 meter um, uh, offset dish I use for narrowband SSB. Um, uh, the DATV equipment is just behind the, the mesh dish. If you guys see the, the box sitting on the floor there with the white pipes uh, each side of the box. Um, there is the, the amplifier and the Pluto, everything is there in the box, so I connect to the Pluto via network cable, Ethernet. So that's my, my setup here uh, from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Great net, uh, very, very nice to see all you guys, uh, as usual, uh, very great information. Uh, sorry about the car. Glad that uh, the, the driver is okay, but uh, yeah, that was ugly. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, everything shown here, very interesting, very nice. Uh, glad to participate. Uh, probably next Thursday we're going to be around as well, because it's going um, to be a big holiday in the U.S., Thanksgiving. Um, so things going to be calm to me. Um, thank you very much. I uh, wish you all a great weekend. Uh, hope to see you guys on Sunday uh, on the Worldwide DATV Net as well. Well, actually, I hope to be there as well. <laughs> I'm not sure, but uh, uh, very, very nice. Thank you all. Um, I'm passing to um, G4 Tango, uh, not tax. No, 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 not, not good. I'm sorry to confuse uh, your call. Uh, G4 X-ray Alpha Tango, it's with you from Papa Yankee 2 Radio November. Greetings, 73 to all. Thanks, Ed. <coughs> G4 XAT. Come on, mute. That's it. Right, got it. Okay. <coughs> Um, yeah, that, uh, that uh, software looks interesting, Keith. I've made a note of it to, to have a look. Um, I did check my lip sync earlier and it seems okay. Nobody's mentioned anything about the audio, so I'll assume it's actually not too bad. Um, I suspect, though, that that uh, old microphone I showed, the audio quality won't be much cop. So <clears throat> um, I'll look into other inserts. Yeah, I, I wondered... Um, quite what that bit of mesh was for Martin. It looks as though it's been cut out of a, a string bag or something. You know, the sort of things that they um, wrap Satsumas up in these days, but much finer. It, it certainly needed a, a very good wash. Uh, and the plastic had degraded. Uh, the bit I showed was just the uh, the bit that hadn't been exposed to X years of of spittle and dribble and goodness knows what else. Okay, um, that's your Christmas bonus gone then, I reckon, Colin. Um, I, uh, I've tried to resist spending money on the 3D printer because I, I did use it an awful lot in its first few years. Um, nowadays, I mean, I used it a lot uh, yesterday and the day before, um, turning out bits and pieces, and I, I do sometimes wish it was a little bit quicker, but to be honest, I've got so many other things to do. It's, um, it's not a worry. And it, it really um, does what it says, it prints. Um, back in COVID days, I got involved in printing um, face mask frames. And Prusa published um, some files. And they said, make sure your printer's screwed down and uh, everything is tight. And it probably went about three times as fast as it usually did. It absolutely flew. Um, to knock these frames out but I thought well yeah <clears throat> at the end of the day it's horses for courses isn't it uh, these little gadgets are quite handy uh, there's a family of them 
Of course, if you rotate a fishing pole, it's uh, designed to release and collapse, which if you've got a beam on the top of it, is a bit terminal to the beam sometimes. So uh, I've designed a, a set of those that um, you line them with a bit of bicycle inner tube and put them on the top of the joint and just nip them up in number plate bolts, which I find very useful for these sort of things. And uh, it stops it collapsing. Uh, right, the antenna itself um, looks like this. This is the uh, the plot from Managel, which I have to say for free software has solved several antenna designs, both for me and for several other people. Um, it's quite fun. I mean, you can um, you can calculate it, you can optimize, you can view stuff, and you can look at the geometry. Um, but um, that's the far field plot, which pretty much matches what I found. Although uh, I think I've got more front to back than that shows. Uh, you can optimize it for um, for 50 ohms and a better VSWR, but to be honest, I just fiddled with the feed point a bit. It's just a dipole, literally two quarter waves. And instead of connecting to their very innermost ends, I connected to the outside and bingo, the VSWR dropped down to something really quite broadband and acceptable. I've no idea quite why that is, but uh, whatever, it was fascinating nevertheless. Okay, um, the uh, the nodes all sound interesting. Um, I've, uh, I've got surplus Raspberry Pis somewhere, so I really perhaps ought to um, buy the sound card. I like that mod idea, Colin. I have to say I've I've done little things like that before using the chip legs as um, stress relief. <laughs> that's uh, that's really quite good, I guess. Certainly the bottom left pin, I think, you showed uh, is one of them. And if the other one is the top right, sorry, top left, then uh, that's a perfect way of connecting up to them if you've got some really small um, enameled wire, which I have. I've got, I've got a whole biscuit tin full of different sizes and so on. Okay, um, <clears throat> that's it from me. Um, round to you, G8KOE. As soon as the test card makes it onto the screen. Uh, from G4XAT, listening with interest. Over. Helps if you start the encoder, doesn't it? <laughs> Helps if you start the encoder, doesn't it? <laughs> Shouldn't think anything interesting. Um, I do like all these little printed bits and pieces. Um, I'm sort of jealous in some ways, but uh, I'm not going to get involved. Um, I must admit, the only time I needed anything, I did get on to uh, Roger to print something for me, and uh, I think I'd probably go that route. Um, oh, the cat's come to say hello. Um, yeah, I've not got a lot to add other than um, I'm, I'm sort of a little puzzled because um, I lost the dashboard or lost any stations on the dashboard for a while. Um, let's go back to the centre screen. Um, and they've all come back now. Um, I could see the... Um, um, this one, the... Um, Oh, that's, but I couldn't get the dashboard, but uh, we've now got uh, 18 stations connected. Um, I don't know what the limit is. I must try and find out at some stage whether um, there was a setting that is applied to, but um, it certainly uh, is starting to expand. And um, it, uh, you know, I keep thinking, that, oh, you know, that's something I've done especially being uh, running uh, a new node as such. And I'm not sure it uh, does any updates or whatever in the background. Or whether even Windows is doing some updates in the background. But uh, I think it's 25. OK there. Interesting. Um, <laughs> 19's getting close then. Um, now I'll have to relook. I, I, I thought it was something like that. Um, but... Um, Maybe that uh, caused problems. Um, 
so one can uh, one can do something about it if we get to that sort of stage. I have to put uh, a second bit on it as such, but um, yeah, I think I'll keep it short of that. Being um, I don't really have much to add other than uh, oh, I didn't quite hear what that was, but um, good to uh, to hear. I think was that Maria. Oh, it's you! It's now I know. Um, yeah, it's, and, and and of course, um, <laughs> you know, all, all the sort of nodes need to run on um, all the main station nodes. You know, need to run on uh, obviously uh, a Raspberry Pi uh, five. You see, it comes in a nice case. I must admit, I'm quite impressed with the case. It's a metal case, plastic top, little fan on the top. And it's very quiet, um, but um, yeah. Anyway, it, it doesn't need a microphone. That's the advantage of it, <laughs> especially for Colin. That one. Um, yeah, let's go back to me. Get rid of that. Yeah, it, um, one day, Colin, you'll be as popular as me. On that note, um, I'm just. Um, Good to uh, see Ed on as well. Absolutely brilliant. Um, you put some, you put some cracking pictures through. Um, absolutely. Um, I think you're, I think you're running DATV Red, if I remember rightly. Um, but uh, they really are good, and uh, interest on your ears, etc. Even though uh, I've seen them before, I find it quite fascinating. Right. It's. Uh, uh, round to uh, sunny Spain, I think, as opposed to, um, actually it's 4.7 degrees here, and we didn't have any snow today. So I'll put a test card and um, throw it over to the uh, the sound expert, <laughs> and uh, see you all next week. Uh, and um, I'm not sure I'll make the net on the worldwide net on uh, Sunday. Uh, so I've got a visitor coming, so I might not make it. So um, we shall see. Right. A test card and uh, it's over to Spain from G8 KOE. Right, yeah, <coughs> it, it, sunny Spain it is, but uh, there's a freezing cold wind today. It's very, very windy. Uh, I can't tell you what the temperature is, um, and it probably wouldn't mean anything, anything, anyhow, because it, I think you've got to take into account the chill factor of the wind, haven't you? But the sun has been shining. It's just freezing, that's all. Um, <clears throat> OK, Keith, I'll take the bait. Uh, but I have to say, I'm not a user of OBS. I have tinkered with it. I've, I've never used, tried to use a plug-in or anything like that. Um, in When I started this DATV lark on... on uh, Q100, I did actually use uh, OBS for a short while and I found the sound routing or whatever it's called extremely complicated. The monitoring, you know, what you're listening to, and it, it drove me nuts actually, which is one reason I decided never to use it again. I thought it was far too complicated for the likes of me. But I suspect, well, well first of all, I would expect uh, a metering plug-in to just monitor the sound but maybe it passes the sound through it and if it does I would expect it to have unity gain if it's a plug-in it probably is the latter i.e. the sound passes through it with unity gain so that would mean that this complicated shenanigans that goes on with the audio routing in OBS is, has got some kind of gain control in it somewhere. Now Martin suspects that you are compressing it, so that could be the culprit. <coughs> Maybe there's, if you put in the compressor after the meter in, so you've got the plug-in for the meter followed by a plug-in for sound processing, that would account for it. Maybe there's an output control on it because many compressors have an input control and an output control and a compression ratio and goodness knows what else. 
Um, so that could be the culprit. So first thing to do would be disable or remove the sound processing and see if that makes a difference. It's in that area somewhere for sure. And it's it's also possible, of course, that your gain control on the front panel, the, the slider for the audio level, is also after the metering, in which case that should be set at, at the zero point, indicating unity gain. So there's a couple of suggestions for you to look at, Keith. I hope that helps. Christmas. I don't think I've got a, a bow tie. I used to have one. But I haven't worn a dinner jacket now <laughs> since I was in Rotary, and that's about a million years ago in England. <laughs> I don't think I've got one. So I, I don't know what I'll do for that. I think of something. Right, that's it from me. Uh, I've enjoyed the net very much. I always learn things from this. Uh, so where are we going next? We're going to Richard. GI4DOH from EA7KIR. EA7KIR, this is GI4DOH. Thanks, Michael. Uh, yes, uh, I'm sure it's a bit warmer with you. It was uh, one, uh, one degree on the uh, in Bangor County Down uh, this morning when I went for a walk along the, the coast with a, with a friend. And certainly on the, the headlands in the uh, in the uh, the uh, the open wind, it was it was pretty chilling. It was it wasn't too bad. Uh, walking into Bangor for a coffee, walking back into the wind was uh, was almost painful on the the face. Just the uh, the chill on that, but uh, yeah, yeah, a bit different to the forty odd degrees centigrade in. Uh, Burkino Faso, and <laughs> uh, in our radio room with uh, uh, with the air conditioner that kept uh, kept tripping uh, and running linear amplifiers on each of the uh, the four stations. <laughs> the uh, temperature got up to something uh, ridiculous, so uh, certainly consumed an awful lot of water, uh, particularly given the uh, the the health issues and the the rest. I was consuming a, a vast quantity of water uh, every every day. It was just coming out the wrong orifice uh, without going into too much detail. I Colin, the, I've looked at the uh, the bamboo uh, printers, and I'm not going to I'm not going to be tempted. Uh, a bit like you said, Gareth. It, it you know you've got a got a printer. It takes a bit of time, but I'm not doing a vast number of things and. Generally, you know, if I'm printing something, I can I can wait. So I'll stick with what I've got for the time being. The the problem is, is a, a steep learning curve with with all new things. Uh, yeah, it looks like we've uh, we've lost Richard. Something died in uh, Richard's shack. That's not so good. Uh, Paul Paul's not coming on. So um, Keith, take it away, Keith. If you're uh, if you're still there, G four F K K. Okay, uh, Martin. <clears throat> yeah. Hopefully it's nothing too uh, serious there, Richard. Um, yeah, I've played around with the uh, sound settings. I hope it's nothing too uh, serious there, Richard. You suddenly power went down to about half level on my uh, display here. Right, it's change over to me. Um, trying to watch too many things. Um, yeah, thank you, Michael, um, and uh, Wolfgang there, who um, yeah, kind of uh, gave me some pointers. Well, I've taken the limiter out of the uh, circuit now, and the audio definitely seems uh, louder. So uh, I think that's probably where I need to uh, go and uh, <coughs> and look. Um, yeah, it's Michael that started us off on this. Um, kind of audio uh, experience there um, by mentioning everybody's different levels and Michael was right so um, yeah I thought it was about time I tried and sorted mine out so um, I'll uh, I'll read there's lots of oh, this as Michael rightly says there's so many places where the audio goes um, and is rooted and 
so many things. I need to read the instructions on this Ulean loudness meter 2 software, which can be used for other devices. It's not just a um, ABS plugin. It can be used standalone and all sorts. So, um, yeah, I need to read, understand and uh, look at it uh, a lot more in depth there. So um, apart from me and my audio troubles, I seem to have sorted out all the other issues. And um, yeah, we'll just wait for the wind to die and I'll go and make sure everything's uh, still where I left it in the garden antenna wise there. Anyway, round to you there, um, Martin. Uh, G4 FKK and the BATC Thursday net. Uh, round to you. Yeah, very good, uh, Keith. GU6 EFB. Yeah, GU4 FKK. Yes, I think the, the limiter must have been over limiting. <laughs> but uh, so you actually do get louder now when you when you get nearer the microphone. So um, so that's good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the limiter, but uh, it needs to uh, limit at the right uh, the right point. It's quite funny when I um, when we started using DAB at uh, Jazz FM, where I was the uh, chief engineer. Um, it sounded terrible, cause, you know, it, flipping MPEG two or something, and I didn't like it at all. But um, but I th and we had some. Quite quite smooth, but uh, definite processing on FM. But if I put the process signal into the DAB transmitters, it just sounded appalling. So uh, all I did was I put a, I put a, a very cheap, gentle gain riding um, device. Oh, hang on, there's someone at the door. Stand by. That's my uh, errant wife back home again at last. Uh, yeah, so I'd had some gentle gain riding on it and um, a very uh, gentle limiter, just in case anyone got overexcited in the uh, in the studios. And um, I had all sorts of uh, emails from the other chief engineers in the London area. So that was Kiss FM. Uh, who else do we have at the time? Uh, it wasn't called Magic in those days. Melody, that's it, Melody. And um, uh, the, B, the, the local BBC station, and Capital, uh, all kept uh, saying, what, what on earth processing are you using on, on DAB? It, so it sounds fantastic. I, so I said, oh, I'm afraid that's a trade secret, unless you want to give me vast amounts of money. I did tell them eventually, but... Um, yeah, so... Um, Audio is a uh, can be tricky. Um, I don't think I've got any other serious notes here, other than to say, get well soon, uh, Richard. Hope you're uh, firing on all four very quickly. And um, well, Michael, no bow tie. <laughs> That's fine. You'll uh, you'll get away with that, no problem. Uh, oh, there's Anne rummaging around in the background. Right, OK, well, I think we'll call it quits then. That was a good uh, good big net today. Nice to see Paul and uh, to see Ed, Ed back again. Um, I actually made it. Actually, Ed, I, I did make it onto the worldwide uh, net last Sunday. We, we're normally uh, busy doing lunch somewhere else or having someone around here for lunch. But um, last Sunday... It was all clear, so I was able to get on the net, uh, but you, you weren't there. At least she sounded sober, yeah. <laughs> I think she probably will be, John. Um, but the idea was she was going to go and have this coffee with her friend and, and her friend's friend in London. Uh, so she, you know, she was due back just after lunch, but uh, then they went to this show, and I'll hear the full story any minute. Anyway, thanks everyone for coming on the net. Thanks to all those who were uh, commenting in the chat. 
and watching. I noticed Tim, uh, MW0RUDs, are on your list of uh, nodes there, Martin. So uh, I didn't, didn't notice Tim uh, getting on there. And, uh, yeah, Paul, I hopefully see you next week. And uh, anyone else who's watching, every, everyone is welcome on this net. Um, it can sometimes get a bit, uh, a bit uh, large, but uh, the larger the better, I always think. Oh, Dave, G8ADM, Jazz of M is still on. Preferably on the Sky Street. Yes, it's not the Jazz FM that uh, that I knew, uh, Dave. I was there for 13 years, but um, it, it ended up on DAB only, and I, th I think it may still be on some D DAB multiplexes, and it's certainly on the uh, Sky Transponder. And they still call it Jazz FM, but uh, Trade Descriptions Act, etc. HI. Um... Anyway, I'm glad you saw it. I liked all the comments on the uh, the 19 sets, by the way. <laughs> I, I say I had a few of those through my hands in my uh, young days. I got um, I got two of them from um, Huggets in Croydon. I don't remember those uh, them, Dave. And uh, what was the other place? There was a place in Thornton Heath as well. Or was, or was that Huggets? Oh, God. Alzheimer's kicking in. Right, with that... I shall say 73 to everyone who's watching, 73 to all those in San Diego who may be watching later on uh, their evening. Um, Mario says they've uh, recorded the net and they're going to play it back to uh, some people who've been at work and, and miss the, uh, the live one, as it were. But anyway, nice to know you're all watching. And uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to see if we can organise a... Uh, a, trans, a transatlantic link at some point, perhaps get uh, get some of you on the net one day. Rather like the thing we did uh, with the Australians. OK, that really is it. 73, everybody. Thanks again. And uh, see you all next week. This is G4FKK closing the BATC Thursday evening net and wishing everyone a very good night. Cheerio.